Um, Vinny is one of my teammates. Um, I talked to Vinny a lot at the gym. He's one of my coaches on the Ultimate Fighter, and he had told me multiple times that he didn't want to corner against me after he cornered against me with Roxanne, and he told me like four times just he wasn't going to corner against me with Jamie because Jamie had asked him to corner, and he told Eric Nixick, one of my main coaches, one of his main cornermen, that he wasn't going to corner against me, and none of us knew until we showed up and saw him getting off the bus, so I thought it was just a real shady move of him not to like, at least showed us a message yesterday, like obviously he knew. Uh, if he would have shot us a message, honestly, I wouldn't have cared as much. But like the fact that like I showed up and saw him getting off the bus, and I was like, is that Vinny? And then it was. And, and so I don't know. I just think it's a dick move. You're there during all my hard sparring. You're there during my training. Like you obviously know my game plan. Like how are you supposed to corner a fighter and not tell them what I'm planning on doing? You know. So I don't know. I just thought it was shady of him, and so I was pretty excited to tell him to fuck off afterwards. Do you expect uh, Vinny to apologize? Um, no, because I went over there and he didn't even say anything. He's like, she's one of my students, and it's like. She may be one of your purple belts, but she lives in California and you live here. You train with me every single day. So I don't know. I just think he, I think he's a little, little bitch. Well, how about the win, the first win of your career in the UFC? How did that feel? Oh, it feels so good. I'm just so excited to prove to everybody that I belong here. I know I haven't had the best showing in the past. I felt really good in going into my fight with Jillian. I got caught in something sneaky. Um, so I don't know. I'm just like excited to show everybody. I got to show my stand up. I got to show my ground game. And I just, I don't have holes. And I just wanted to show everybody that I do belong here. I know a lot of people doubt that. And I am good enough to be here. And I just plan on being a staple in the strawweight division for quite a while. Yeah, how did you feel competing back at strawweight? Uh, you, were, you made your debut at flyweight. Uh, strawweight is your natural weight class. Uh, it felt good to be back at Strawway. I feel good and I feel strong there. Fighting at 25 is not hard. I walk around like at 127, like before the fight. So there's no weight cut. There's no giving up anything. You know, when you're cutting weight those weeks and you're giving up all those like little treats that you like, like there's just something that like your brain like switches and you're just like, I'm giving up all of this stuff. And like it's because of her. And so the weight cut, like the, that's like the fight before the fight. And I didn't have that before. And so, you know, struggling in the bath and then getting on the scale and feeling that weight cut, making the weight, like that's what it's all about. So I don't. I don't know, it just feels good to be back in my home at Strawweight. And then you've talked about this before, uh, obviously you have the skills to, to put it in there in the cage, but I know mentally you've had some blocks. Uh, what, what made this camp and this fight different for you in the cage tonight? Um, I feel like I just always did myself a big disservice. I just didn't really realize I was like holding on to so much like resentment to my mom. Uh, I actually went home and kind of reconnected with her a little bit. And uh, it, I went home because I went to go to Fall Robert Falls' memorial. Uh, we're both from Portland. And uh, I ended up not even going to his memorial because I ended up finding my mom. And uh, she's not in the greatest spot but I just had so much anger to, towards her that I didn't really realize I was like holding on to and then I was just able to let go of all of that and like just feel so much like empathy and sadness for her and uh, I just feel like that like really helped me grow from that I just like was able to like realize all this stuff and that I was just like the person at my own demise like it was just all in my head just overthinking everything that like just didn't matter and just fighting another girl for three rounds from another gym and I would just think about all of this stuff that just didn't matter and I know I know no girl I'm ever going to fight has been through the stuff that I've been through, and so I just know, like, I do belong there, and I just need to show everybody that I am a fighter. I've been a fighter my whole life. You talked about trying to honor Robert Paulus with this performance. Do you feel that you accomplished that? I definitely feel like I honored Robert in this, and uh, I feel like all of us have. I feel like Kevin came out and did a really good job. I feel like Tim did the same thing, and I feel like he was always trying to help all of us with, like, the mental side of things, and I really feel like we all were able just to, like, let go of whatever the fuck it was holding us back, like, mentally, and just went out there and performed, and I'm just happy I was able to do the same as them. How did you guys have it go scored in your mind going into the third round? Did you have it 1-1, and did you feel that you really need to put it on? Because I think you actually attempted your first takedown attempt in the third round as well, but tell us what you guys talked about going in that third round. Yeah, I knew that I I was pretty sure I got the first. I like had the center of the cage most of the time. I landed some good shots and had her backing up a lot. Um, and then the second round, she came out. And even though I felt like I had the center most of the fight, I feel like she kind of landed a little bit of the better, and I kind of was backing up a little bit. And uh, so I just knew that the third round, whoever got the third round was going to win the fight. And so I definitely knew I needed to go out there. Uh, I didn't really plan on shooting, like, necessarily as, the, as like, the third round started, but then I just, like, felt it was there, and I just – I, I do shine in half guard, and so I just knew that I needed to get there, and I was able to keep her there like basically the whole round. What's next for you after this fight? Uh, back at strawweight, 
whole new division. What's, uh, what's on your mind? Um, well, I'll take a little bit of time off. I got a freaking cut in the last 10 seconds. <laughs> what? Yeah. Total bullshit. Yeah. So I'll let my cut heal. Um, I'll go to Phoenix. I'll probably hang out with my boyfriend for a little bit and then come back and get right back to work. Um, maybe go home to Oregon for a little bit and see some friends and family. One of my friends is getting married in September, so I'll probably go try and do that. But I'll always be training. I'm always training. I basically am in fight camp year-round. I train twice a day, every day. So basically just when fight camp starts, I just like amp it up, diet and stuff like that. So I'll just do what I've been doing. I know the, the, the cuts. Everybody wants to stay pretty, but are they a, a little bit of pride, you know, going back and have a little battle scar or something? You can go and talk to people after the fight and say, Look what I got. Uh, I think a black eye is cool to talk about, not so much a cut. I don't, I'll be definitely putting in a lot of vitamin E oil on this thing. So, um, yeah, and I'm just so mad it happened in the last 10 seconds. I didn't even get like a bloody fight where I'm like fighting and have blood running down my face and look like a warrior. Everyone probably was like, how the heck did that even happen? So, that upkick got up there pretty high. So, good job, Jamie. <laughs>